How many games do you think there are in the Call of Duty series? Don't look it up on Wikipedia, just give me a number. You'll have to try to guess. It's not an easy question, even for diehard fans. Did you get a number? Okay, keep it in your mind. On November 5th, a new game in the Call of Duty series, Vanguard, will be released. A game about World War II with a zombie mode and additional content for Warzone. There are people, and I must say that we are among them, who are waiting for Vanguard because of the setting. One of the most popular and successful game series in history began its journey in World War II. And yeah, with all the spin-offs and expansions, Vanguard is the 46th game in the series. This is Hello Arcade. While you're processing this figure, we'll tell you how the Call of Duty series evolved. In the past 18 years, Activision has managed to show the war in the past, present, and future, release a couple mobile games, and create a near-perfect shooter formula. This video is the first part of our story, about the early successes and failures of the franchise. Part 2 will be linked in the description and on screen right now. Call of Duty the first game in the series was created by a group of former devs from 2015 Inc. They had created probably the most successful Medal of Honor game, Allied Assault. But after breaking up with Electronic Arts and quitting the Medal of Honor series, they formed Infinity Ward with the help of Activision and released the original Call of Duty in 2003. Medal of Honor could not survive this competition. The first Call of Duty offered excellent graphics, action-packed story, and most notably, allowed players to fight alongside multiple AI allies. Today this feature seems obvious, but at the time, military shooters were mostly about a lone hero wreaking havoc somewhere far behind enemy lines. Before Call of Duty, creating decent AI companions who could realistically fight and use cover seemed impossible. Infinity Ward did manage to develop this technology, with the help of Eid Software's Eid Tech 3 engine. It was an explosive success, and in less than a year, an expansion called United Offensive was released, along with a separate game for consoles called Finest Hour and the mobile Call of Duty Engage, published by Nokia. Activision did not miss the opportunity and successfully invested in the creation of a whole franchise. Call of Duty 2 The folks from Infinity Ward understood exactly what they wanted. They took the biggest battles of World War II, D-Day, the Battle for Moscow, the Rhine Operation, and created a large-scale military action using the latest technologies. What came out was a game with great graphics, a user-friendly interface, and game mechanics that became fundamental for the series. Call of Duty 2 was one of the first games to implement health regeneration without the health bar on the screen. Needless to say, the game was another success. In 2005, Xbox 360 was released. Guess which game was the best-selling title for the main console of the generation that year? Not another Halo. It was Call of Duty 2. Previously a PC exclusive, Call of Duty was starting to dominate the console shooter genre. The same year Triarch Studio joined the work on the franchise, they released a successful spin-off to Call of Duty 2 called Big Red 1. It had a decent story, agile enemy AI, and a health bar. Call of Duty 3 Triarch took on the job. The studio had a formula for the series, spectacle plus scale plus practicality, and a new game engine, which allowed this formula to be implemented. The game was praised for the quality of animation, textures, and special effects. Year after year, Call of Duty raised the bar for visuals, and 2006 was no exception. COD 3 is important for two reasons. First of all, because of the multiplayer. Yes, previous games had it as well, but it was Call of Duty 3 that had ratings, ranks, and all the main game modes, which is almost everything that we see today. Also, there were cars and tanks, for the first time in COD multiplayer. Secondly, it was the first major release in the series that bypassed PC and only released on consoles. Activision was signaling that Call of Duty could be a AAA exclusive if it needed to. Luckily, it didn't stay that way because the following year, we saw the release of… Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Infinity Ward was making another revolution. Modern Warfare abandoned the World War II setting, dramatically changed the series, and broke all the charts in 2007. 
The game managed to improve on everything. The story, the graphics, the scale, the music. Every aspect made this game a milestone. The release of Modern Warfare became the turning point for its creators. Now the whole world knew what Call of Duty was and how good it could be. Oh, and how well the game was directed. Remember the opening scene? They're executing President Al-Falani and you're watching it in first person, or the mission in Pure Pit that became the staple of the entire franchise. What Infinity Ward made felt like a movie, and a really good one. But for all its merits, the story was not the key feature of Modern Warfare. The main focus was the multiplayer. The devs expanded on the ideas laid down in Call of Duty 3 by adding some oh-so-familiar mechanics. Now players could customize weapons, call in support, score killstreaks, and rank up in prestige mode. The multiplayer in Modern Warfare was so good that it's still being played today. In 2016, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered came out. The improved version wasn't bad. Good graphics, modern special effects, and untouched original gameplay. It was a gift for the fans, starving for good releases. Ironically, the remaster was originally included in the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare pre-order bundle. Call of Duty World at War The devs from Treyarch went against the hype and didn't change their setting they were familiar with. In 2008, the fans had not yet had time to move away from Modern Warfare. But the new COD told the story of World War II in the Pacific and on the Eastern Front. And it did it very effectively. Spectacular battles plus brutal dismemberment. The scene with the protagonist hiding in a pile of corpses was making a point about how this game was about the real war. Even though World at War paled in comparison to its predecessor, it still brought significant changes to the series. Now Call of Duty could be about blown off limbs and realistic violence too. The main innovation was the zombie mode. Treyarch added a droplet of craziness to this gruesome setting and ended up with a game mode that became an integral part of the franchise. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 All Infinity Ward had to do was keep their bar high after the release of the first Modern Warfare. And they did. The second part wasn't groundbreaking. The gameplay, the multiplayer, the graphics, it was all just not worse than the original. The plot was an improvement though. They added more drama and twists into a simple story about fighting terrorists. And then there's of course the famous No Russian mission, which sent a shockwave far outside the gaming community. The players had to take part in a terrorist attack on Moscow airport. This is one of the most controversial and emotional missions in the history of video games. If anything, this mission alone is reason enough to play the game, in case somehow you missed it. Call of Duty Black Ops After the success of the Modern Warfare series, it was obvious that Call of Duty needed to find and explore a new setting for the following game. The Cold War and Vietnam eras were the most obvious choice, and here Treyarch really shined. The plot successfully combined a spy thriller with military realism and conspiracy nonsense, burning down Vietnamese villages to the sounds of Rolling Stones included. There was little faith in the game until its release, and the fans went through a period of anticipation and uncertainty. At this time, key employees were leaving Infinity Ward to create Respawn Studios and make the first Titanfall. It seemed as if Call of Duty was done for, when suddenly Black Ops was released and turned out to be at least as good as the previous games. The cherry on top was, again, the zombie mode, as ridiculous and fun as it needed to be. What other game allowed you to crush zombie skulls playing as John Kennedy, Fidel Castro, or Richard Nixon? Call of Duty 3, Modern Warfare 3. The next game was surrounded by bad news from the start. First, Activision decided to split the development of the next game between two studios. The weakened Infinity Ward was supported by Sledgehammer Games. There were leaks, there were rumors, and just before the game's release, news about a delivery truck with discs being robbed, around 6,000 copies stolen. Modern Warfare 3, though a commercial success, was trashed by the critics and the community. There was nothing new about this game, except a somewhat incoherent plot. 
The game was supposed to be the climax of Modern Warfare, and here we were. Modern Warfare 3 has come, and the heroes need to save the whole world, but something was broken. Modern Warfare 3 just felt redundant. Infinity Ward couldn't compete with the high quality and innovation of Battlefield 3 by their competitor DICE. Modern Warfare 3 would become the most mentioned game on Facebook in 2011. Not because it inspired excitement as the previous games did, but because of its ambiguity and weakness in comparison with them. The Call of Duty franchise was no longer cutting edge, strong competitors were emerging, and the community was starting to see weaknesses in this colossal franchise. The familiar thesis that the series was stalling was born. In the next episode, we'll talk about the rest of the franchise and discuss where Call of Duty might be heading in the future. This has been Hello Arcade. Leave us a like, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next one.